This is the Bitrix Monty, a short travel EMTB. Powered by the Fang M400 motor with a 504 watt hour battery capable of supporting it to a 700 watt hour battery if necessary. A Shimano Dior drive crane with a 11 to 42 tooth cassette. 140 millimeters of travel up front with 120 millimeters of travel out back. 27.5 inch wheels front and rear it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't need to scream the latest and greatest in terms of specs and components it just needs to do the job well <laughs> this ain't too bad Man, man, the thing just feels popping. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, this bike is sick. Seriously, this bike is just too sick. I know there's gonna be a fair few amongst you who are gonna be looking at the bike thinking, nah, it ain't nothing, please. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that flowing around on Google when I've typed in cheap MTBs or cheap bikes. And you might have, you might have seen something like this, but this one's fine. But you'd ultimately be mistaken because I have never seen anything like this. Not like this. Not like this. So the Bike Trex Monty is just a full suspension EMTB, which technically was the prototype for when they designed this bike, the Victrix Juggernaut. Uh, that bike actually uses the M620s, which FYI, if you want to see my YouTube videos regarding the M620s, I'll leave something up here for you to go check that out. This bike uses the Fang M400, which if you haven't seen my last video regarding the Remington MX Pro, I'll leave something up here for you to go check that video out. Hotel for life, baby. But just like the Remington MX Pro, I bought the Victrix Monty. Oh my days, there you go. There you go, I called it the Victrix. You see, where is the E, where is the E? I bought the Bike Trex back in 2018 because, well, I wanted a full suspension EMTB which used a Bafang M400 motor and I was already quite used to those motors because, you know, Remington MX Pro and technically speaking, you haven't seen the first one which I purchased, my first EMTB. You'll see that. You'll see that, don't worry, don't worry. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. Anyway, so the Bafang M400 motors, what do we know about them? Kicks out 80 new meters of torque and they can be operated by either a 36 volt or a 48 volt battery. Not too bad, eh? Did you know, did you know that technically speaking, the Bafang M400s were never really designed for the purposes of EMTVs? I know, I only just discovered this myself. But I'd say for the last couple of years, I mean, you know, it's not like I've owned the Specialized bikes for like a while, or I've only owned them quite recently, but I'd say I've been using the Bafang motors a hell of a lot more, so I know the in and outers of the motors very, very well. I, I don't know, it's just, what do you know? I, I, I know something, I know something about Bafang. You do with that information as you will, people. But it's only as I look back on it now, I realized that the Monty was technically the last Bafang M400 ENTB I actually purchased. The Lancer was the second from last. Uh, and the only reason why I got that is because I actually seen that bike being advertised and then I just thought, I'm gonna nab it. This one on the other hand, because it favored the Remington because it used the same battery, that's the whole reason why I bought this bike. It's only when I had the bike in person, I discovered 
the potential limitations towards the bike. Yeah. All right, for starters, the bike came with a straight steerage head tube with bearings favoring a straight steerage tube fork. I was I was so mad when I actually found this out. I was like, so I'm limited as to what type of fork I can put in this thing, actually. And believe me, the original fork was just, I can't swear, I can't swear. What's the polite word of saying crap? Crap. Same thing for the rear shock, to be fair, actually. Though, it was coil. I, it, it was a coil shock, but it didn't. When I say coil shock, I'm not talking Olin's coil or Fox coil or Rock Shock's coil. I'm talking coil like, not even Kind Shock coil, like some, I don't know, just, just, just to forget that it's, it, yeah. But effectively, I upgraded the bike and I started putting an air fork on it, which was a Suntour Rider originally, and then I moved on to a, well, the, it's still rocking the same Exo or X Fusion. What's it called? What's it called? It's X Fusion. It's an X Fusion rear shock. Air. It's an air fork. It's an air. I can't even get my words out. Just, just, just trust me. The bike is better now. The bike is better now. It's rocking a dropper seat post as well. Can't forget your droppers. Can't forget your droppers. Good upgrade. Good upgrade. But it's only been recently where I actually discovered that the bike was potentially able to support a tapered fork. Gotta give a huge shout out to Kane Creek for the EC4440. Oh my god. I mean, to be fair, it's not a new invention in which Kane Creek was made. Kane Creek are one of the few companies who create head tube bottom cups which are compatible for a 44 mil diameter head tube which if you press it in it can make it into a taper. Basically look, just, all you need to know is that the bike is no longer running a straight steering fork, it's running a tapered head tube. It's, not, it's a tapered head tube, it's running a tapered steering fork. Look, it's just, oh, it's just better, it's just better. Look, let's just move on. Bike is sick. Bike is sick. I'm sorry, that's all I gotta say. The bike is sick. This is, this is, this is sick. I'm, on my days like this, this, I'm gonna be using this bike a little bit longer, ladies and gentlemen, believe me. And it's powered by Bafang, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, let's not get it twisted. I don't care what people say about, oh, Bafang, they're okay, they're okay. Look, at the end of the day, you can go into the damn display and just turn the thing to, I wanna, you can actually tell the bike to say, I want to go faster than 15.5 miles an hour. I want to go faster than 20 miles an hour. Why are we still following the European guidelines? Do, aren't we not away from Europe? I, I don't know. What's, what's going on there? What's, what's going on there? Over here, it's 15.5 miles an hour, just like Europe. And with these Bafang motors, you know, you can literally just say, I want to go 18 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour or 28 miles an hour. And you know, it just does it. It's like, and that has been my introduction to EMTVs, ladies and gentlemen. None of this 15.5 mile malarkey. I've just been introduced to a motor which can technically just take you as fast as you want to go, actually. It was the specialized bikes and your Boshes and your Shimano's and your Yamaha's and your Kazoo's and your whatever e-bike motors are there. Uh, you know what I mean, you know, they're motors. Basically 15.5 miles an hour and 20 miles an hour if you're in America or in Canada, you know. Yeah. Anyway, getting back onto the bike, short travel. 120 millimeters of travel out back, 140 up front. The recon fork in which it's actually using was actually on the Lancer, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a card up here for you to go check that out. But effectively, that bike is now using a Fox 36, and I've just repurposed that recon fork onto this bike, which I'm not gonna lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, it is a better fork than the Rider. Though, to be fair, both forks are 32 mil stanchions, so, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. I can imagine someone's gonna be in the comment section saying, dude, a 32 mil stanchion fork has no place on an ENTB. And you know what? You might be right. A 32 mil stanchion fork probably don't have no place on an ENTB. But you know what? It's my bike. It's my brain. It's my ass. If I fall off the bike or break something, leave a comment down below saying otherwise. What I'm basically trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is I think I'm going to be using this bike for a little bit. Seriously. Like, I've already put away my specialized bikes. Like, I've put them away. Like, to be fair, actually, I love my Canevos, I love my Levos, and the Levo Hardtail, and the Status, and the Enduro, and the Stumpy. Speaking of, Stumpy is now rocking 29 inch wheels. Oh my days, that bike is sick. But I couldn't help but notice that everyone just keeps on riding branded bikes. It's always branded bikes, specialized fighters. Who else is there? Giant. Santa Cruz, why? Everyone's just riding branded bikes and it's like, look man, I didn't get into mountain biking so that I can show off a label. Don't turn around to me and say that I'm a specialized fanboy because the majority of my mainstream mountain bikes are specialized. Mm -hmm. I wanna start riding bikes which y'all ain't never seen before and you've never heard of actually. And this, this bike is one of them. Six, six, one, two. 
Guys, to summarize, all you need to know is one thing. 27.5 short travel ENTBs are not dead. They're still awesome. And I'm gonna be riding this thing for a while. Let me know in the comment section where you want me to take this bike. All right, back to you, President Nico. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, this bike isn't screaming all the newest bells and whistles in terms of suspension and components like drivetrain. It's just rocking practical stuff in terms of being a short travel EMTB. Uh, RockShox Recon up front, uh, X-Fusion rear shock, Shimano Dior 10 speed, 11 to 42 tooth cassette. You know, nothing too, too fancy. Though I will go as far as to say that the Thompson Elite dropper seat post, you know, that is a bit stush, you know. But having said that though, this bike, Honestly, it, it is really a heavy contender in my arson in terms of electric mountain bikes, which just do what short travel EMTB should really do, which is be efficient and capable of handling decent trails, not hardcore bike park trails, but decent trails where you can just use it in a more practical sense. And there's a possibility that further refinement regarding the bike will probably occur. I mean, I wouldn't mind swapping out the tires you know, up front I'm rocking a shrubby, no, specialized butcher in a 2.6 and out back is a Maxxis uh, high roller in a 2.4. So yeah, refinement is necessary, but you know, in terms of the consumable parts, I mean, to be fair, I'm not really that bothered. I mean, tires aren't the end of the world, but in terms of drive train and the suspension, yeah, I'm probably just gonna keep it as is actually. I feel no need to obviously swap anything out at this point. It's actually handling the terrain native to my environment pretty decently. Oh wait, there is one thing I do need to mention. There's one thing, one more thing, one more thing. So I'm not too sure if you guys have noticed from the previous shots I've made, but the chain ring is different. Yes, indeed, it is no longer rocking a stock chain ring and spider combination to which the Bafang M400s usually rock. Um, this is a 36 tooth chain ring, ladies and gentlemen, which is compatible with the Bafang M400. Um, I have a funny feeling I may need to make a separate video in the future highlighting what is compatible with Bafang motors because I know a fair few people have asked what motors and what frames fit certain types of motors and I have been able to work out what is compatible with what frames and you know what components do fit on certain Bafang motors and what you can use universally amongst the board so expect that video soon but having said that though with that 36 tooth chain ring up front it has drastically increased the torque I mean 80 newton meters of torque may not sound like much but if you give any any motor a mechanical advantage you'd be surprised how much power you can actually get out of these motors when you decide to put it in the highest level of assist anyway we've talked long enough let's ride Yo! Yep, we can do the rough. So that's a good thing.
Very nice. Thank you, thank you. Nice. Nice. Nothing too, too spectacular. But if you can handle that, then I know that we're off to a good start, Monty. Guys, I'm not too sure how long this video has been, but having said that, I will be honest with you, I have enjoyed every waking moment being on this bike. This thing has just done magnificently well. And there's something to be said about a bike which you have zero expectations, but it delivers in areas where you didn't see coming. And this bike has so done that. Like I said, I haven't had this much fun in ages. And yes, I'm gonna be rocking this bike for a bit longer. But if you've enjoyed this type of stuff, make sure you hit that like button, comment down below. I'll catch you next week for another different TMT. And until then, take it easy.